Hi everyone, it's Fitch here. Hope you're doing well. Um, first of all, thank you for all the great feedbacks on the last two releases. It's been a blast and I'm glad you're digging them. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff lined up, so I just can't wait to show you um, what's in store. But I decided to make a little video and break down the drop of Collide, show you guys uh, the different elements and some of the processes that I'm doing to make it sound the way that it is. Uh, so yeah, I hope it'll be useful. I definitely learn the best just watching other people work. So uh, based on your requests, um, I hope I could do the same for you guys. So I'll play a little piece of it and then we'll get right into it. So if you haven't heard the track, go check it out. Um, also, there's a live performance version of it on YouTube. So go check that out too. Okay, so the main sound you're hearing is this lead right here. So in its own, it sounds very dry, um, but I'll talk about that in a sec. So here it is. Uh, it's a synth called Diva by Yui. It's an emulation of analog synths like uh, the Juno and Moogs. All of these sections have different uh, modules and uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility actually. Different uh, setups for the oscillators and uh, filters and it all sounds pretty great. Um, it's not a synth that I was familiar with uh, until recently. But hey, uh, I wouldn't have elite sound like this without it. The reason that it sounds so dry is because I've actually split the wet and dry signal uh, into two separate channels. So I've actually made a copy of that Diva and um, in this instance of it, I've put the uh, plate reverb wet all the way uh, to 100. So what it sounds like is this. Okay, so that's the first point I want to talk about. Splitting up wet and dry signal uh, into separate channels or using sends, which essentially does the same thing uh, as long as the effects on the return are at 100%. Um, what it enables you to do is to actually process each signal separately. Um, so with the wet signal, what happens often if you add reverb as an insert, for example, if I just put reverb on this lead directly, it'll add um, a lot of unwanted frequencies that then interfere with other sounds in the mix and create mud. And then, you know, we wonder why everything sounds crowded and stuff like that. So you want to be really careful about the frequencies that you're adding and the extra signal that you're adding. Uh, and in this case, I want to get the focus and the clarity from the dry signal, and I want to get the space uh, from the wet signal. So by uh, working with them separately, um, I make sure that the wet signal is out of the way of the dry one. Uh, it's out wide, for example. I've taken out some of the frequencies in the mids. If I pull up the EQ, you'll see it. You see, so I've drastically cut uh, the reverb here, and uh, as a result, all this is open uh, for the actual main lead sound and this just embellishes it. So the next sound is this one. So that's a sound I use a lot. Uh, you've probably heard it in tracks like Over, Change Me. Uh, it's nothing, uh, nothing fancy, one oscillator eight voices, detuned. Um, this is a rounded saw. Sometimes I do it with a saw, uh, but I've tried different things. It depends on how much high frequency content I want. Obviously here with the rounded saw, I wanted the highs to be a little duller. Um, and I actually did that because I'm adding this layer right here. So 
So that crunch layer, which is essentially a white noise layer, um, is adding a lot of drive to that bass. It's adding a lot of, um, it's almost making it thicker, uh, but all I'm doing is adding a thin band of frequencies up high. So I like doing little things like this, which play with our perception and make the sound uh, feel like it's more driven or like it, it takes up more space. But actually, um, that initial bass is still uh, fairly out of the way of everything. Again, quite drastic uh, shapes on the EQ, but that is because of the way I'm layering things, and I really want things to have their own uh, space in the mix. Under here is going to be the sub, um, the guitars, which I'll talk about in a sec, fit in right here, the lead fits in right here, and then, you know, the reverb of the lead up here, the cymbals up there. Uh, so you really want to get the most out of every single sound that you put in and make sure it's not giving you any more, any less than that. Um, okay, so then the guitars that patch it up are these. You basically build up the frequency spectrum. Uh, from the ground up carefully and and it makes a very uh, full sound uh, that has a lot of energy so this is what I did here the last part of course is the sub it's just a sign um, and the interesting part about this is just the side chaining side chaining is super important because you don't want your drums to be popping out of the mix uh, or poking out of the mix essentially so what side chaining does is based on a trigger um, or a signal, it'll actually cut the sound every time that signal comes through. If you're using the kick for it, every time the kick comes through, uh, the synths will get cut. So I'm actually doing that on these individual channels here. Um, I have sidechain compressors at the end. Sometimes I use volume shaper as well um, to get that effect. Uh, and uh, that's actually just another way to do it. I think it's a little cleaner in uh, certain, uh, certain cases. Here, the cleanest thing, honestly, was to literally cut out a space every time the kick hits. That way, there's no mystery. You're sure the sound's cutting out. There's no kind of clicks. There's no kind of noise that's introduced in that space by, you know, side chaining or latency or any kind of crap like that. And just to actually demonstrate this, I'm going to render a part of the track here and let's talk about it. So I don't have any kind of compression or limiting on uh, on the master right here, as you can see. So, uh, but my waveform still looks very flat. Um, and so this is the point I was trying to make with the side chaining, for example. Since the sounds are cutting out when the drums come in, uh, the drums, you can see they're like the denser uh, parts in the waveform here, um, or just follow the grid. Uh, so they don't poke out of this waveform. They're actually sitting right into it. And so what that will do is then when the mastering limiter is put on this, it will actually react quite uh, easily and regularly to the waveform. And it'll get a lot of gain um, doing that. So yes, I think the loudness wars are done and services are normalizing uh, the levels of audio. But that doesn't mean uh, that you can't have a compact mix that still is loud and doesn't distort and is clean and everything you'd want it to be. So I don't think there's any issue um, there. And definitely, I think side chaining is one of the main things uh, when it comes to that. So just to summarize real quick, um, and I'm sorry if I was rambling a bit, I think there are three things from here that would be important to remember. One is processing wet and dry signals separately, uh, getting more control uh, over each one. Uh, the other one is keep a lookout for new synths that are maybe not your usual ones, like Massive and Serum. We know all about those, and they're great, and they can allow us to do so much. Sometimes trying new synths um, takes us to places where we wouldn't have gone with other ones. So anyways, I think... Um, just generally, it's a good thing to try new things out, get the trial uh, and mess around with it. And the final thing that I'd like to say is just um, 
about side chaining, understanding what side chaining does, different ways with volume envelopes, uh, with compression, with actually cutting out the clip. Um, I think that's important to uh, know. Anyways, these are things that I like to experiment with and it's how I found my my sound and how I've moved forward um, with my music. So I hope it was useful to you. Um, again, let me know your suggestions for um, other videos and challenges because I'll be doing more of those. And um, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Take care.